stated in the Quran Hakim Fafirru ilallah come quickly quickly to Allah Ta'ala run to Allah Ta'ala now what does this mean run to Allah the pious predecessors have stated about this that what type of running is this and where is it a person is running to do running to what does this mean that Run to Allah Ta'ala. Now, Firru ilallah, to run to Allah, it is that day, the day of justice, the day of judgment. That day, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will make the decision with regards to the whole of the humanity and universe. That day, Allah Ta'ala is speaking about that day. فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Allah Ta'ala is giving us the direction that on the day of judgment when people will be standing in front of Allah and all their deeds will be presented to Allah. Allah is saying, hasten, run. Run to that. Flee to that. And what does that mean? Amal via the deeds. Do the deeds that take you to that day with success. So, first thing is when a person moves, he walks a bit slowly, then he walks a bit faster, then he walks faster than that, then he walks a good speed. Then he sort of starts to jog or skip and then he starts to run and then he runs faster than that. So the different positions, you can start by slow walking, faster walking, jogging, sprinting. So here, this is running to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fleeing to Allah. And this means to adopt such actions which they will take you positively to that day, the day of judgment. Now, however more good amal deeds a person implements, then he will run to Allah faster. Remember this, that when there's a race, yes, in a race, some people remain behind, get left behind, some are in the middle, some go a bit ahead, and some are those who are first in the, in the leading pack, or the person who gets the first position, awwal, awwal. So in the same way is this, Allah Ta'ala's direction, that when a person does such deeds, implements such deeds, which will allow him to be included in those who are sprinting faster, the more amal you perform, the faster you will run to Allah. And the person will get first in this race, the first position with the highest rank and status, high status people, because when there's a race, you see that in the world, when there's a cycle race or a horse race, and the person who comes first, the horse or the man, he gets a reward, doesn't he? What doesn't he? He gets a reward. First position, give him a trophy. He won the race, uh, give him a reward. Uh, different rewards, different sort of gifts then his picture will come in the newspaper he's first he's first he won the race in the same way in the race in the hereafter to the hereafter there are different stages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have created various stages and those people the more good deeds they have alhamdulillah then they will in the race of the hereafter be ahead at the front what a beautiful point 
that every Muslim person who has Iman, if he understands this point, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Flee unto Allah. Then every Muslim should try his best to be first in the race, at the front of the race. Obviously, you'll get more reward. And those who get left behind will get nothing. So those who want to get to the front, to get to the higher end of the pack, then they need to do good amal, good deeds. There are different types of deeds Allah Ta'ala has given to us. And every deed, it has an effect in that race. That it will allow you to boost ahead. Yes, get ahead. Get to the front in that race. So the better your deeds are, then the more you will be capable of getting to the front of the race. To this extent that those who will get to the front, who will move to the front with regards to the hereafter, Qiyamah, Allah Ta'ala will give them a high grade in Jannah. Allah will say that these people are afdal, they are the best, they will be first. So Rasulullah some hadith Mubarak, he states, Allahu Akbar, that most of all, most of all, the people will be at the front, who will come first in this race, fafiru ila Allah, towards Allah, fleeing to Allah, to get to Allah, who will be first in the higher status, higher position, this race that we're, we're going through, when will this race end? In the Akhirah. When? On the Day of Judgment. And on the Day of Judgment, those who will be at the front of the race, the front of the pack, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the reward of Jannah, of Paradise. So Nabi al Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that, the people most of all will be at the front. Those who will be at the front of the race obviously will be those people who have that deed which will boost them to the front, take them to the front, that will take them to the front. And those amal that will, it's amal that will take us in. That's why we perform deeds, do good deeds. We want to get that promotion. So Rasulullah has stated that those people will be at the front. Those who will come first in the race are those who men and women do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. The people who do the dhikr of Allah, men and women, in this race, they will get to the front. So thus, the people who get first in the race, imagine the maqam they will have, the status they will have. Uh, great Shaykh, rahmatullah, stated that when people's deeds will be, uh, the, the result of their deeds will be presented, and those will be at the front first, and the others will see the result, that who came first in the race, and what a reward he's got, and this is the race to Allah. Yeah, when a person comes first in the race in the world, people are proud of him, envious, oh, my horse didn't race properly, oh, why didn't we race properly, and the person who gets first, everyone shakes his hand and congratulates him, and takes his picture, and he gets a reward, a trophy, presentation, a lot of money, monetary reward. So this is the race to Allah. And in the day of judgment, when people come first, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what a great reward he will assign. These will, who will those people be? The, what deed did they select from amongst the deeds? Dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah. Why did they select dhikrullah? Because they had the hadith. In the hadith they read. Just like I've explained to you the hadith. So the person who's heard this hadith and he's understood the point that this amal, this deed, the dhikr of Allah, this is that deed that will hurt us to the front of the pack. And the person who, this point is engraved in his mind, he'll start the amal today, just like this hadith I've told you. For this reason, so that we can realize we haven't passed away, have we? We're alive. That uh, there's a race that we're in, we're all in a race. We are racing each other. And the end of that race is the hereafter, the day of judgment. And the person will be first in the race. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself on the day of judgment in front of all of mankind. Allah will reward that jamaat, that congregation, those people will come first. Allah will, you know, just like people in the world put flower garlands in the, around their necks. Allah knows best how he'll receive those people, how he'll take them into Jannah, what maqam they will get because they came first. Because they came first. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't hidden this fact. He said that this amal, this deed, if you want to come first, then what deed do you need to adopt um, along with all amal? Definitely do dhikr of Allah. Obviously all deeds are good deeds, but you need to do dhikr in parallel. Dhikr will boost all of your deeds, promote them, and take them to the heights, make them run. So Allah Ta'ala says, I'm stated that these people, who, those people who remember Allah. Now, another point uh, to be explained here, the reason for this is that when there's a race, for example, when uh, there's a race taking place, um, 
you, when there's a horse race, and when they race, the person who's racing, he lightens himself, his body. Remember, there's the jockey, isn't it? The jockey, I think, isn't it? The person who uh, does horse racing. So the jockey, the rider, because he gets a lot of rewards, you know, in the horse races when they win, he sat on there. So the person who sat on the horse, uh, let's take in the Middle East, when they race on camels, they don't put the men on, they put the children on, because the lighter the body on the camel or on the horse, the lighter the person, then obviously that the animal will race faster. The heavier the person's on the animal that's racing, obviously there's a burden on the horse or the transportation and it will slow that, that race down. So Allah Nabi Sama said that this is the reason that why will you become first? Oh Zakirin, you'll be first for this reason because you will have lightened your burden. Allah Akbar say subhanallah everybody. Subhanallah. Their, their burden will be light. They will have no burden. What are, what are our burden? What is the burden on our sins? But the Zakir, his sins are reduced. His sins are reduced. So they lighten themselves. They, they don't heavy. Sin, uh, dhikr of Allah washes away the sins. Eliminates them. Bukra asila. That's why we're told. Advised to do dhikr. Wathkurus ma rabbika. Allah Ta'ala says that remember me in the morning and the evening. Allah, great Quran. That remember me in such a way that remember me uh, in isolation, quietly sit down. Remember Allah. Which time? Morning and evening. Morning and evening. So when morning and evening person remembers Allah, then obviously his sins are eliminated, washed away. If death comes in the afternoon, then obviously he removed his sins in the morning. He did dhikr. Or if he does dhikr in the night, and at that time during the evening or night or in the morning, the death comes, then obviously death cannot come apart from those times. So if you don't dhikr in the morning, all the night sins are removed. If you do dhikr in the evening, then all the day's uh, sins are removed. Subhanallah. So the, the, the weight, the burden of the Dakarin is a light. And that's why Rasulullah said that they will come first because they will have eliminated their weight and uh, the sins will have gone. So they'll be fast in that race. Alhamdulillah, they'll be running to Allah towards the hereafter, running to the Akhirah, to the day of judgment. What great points, how Rasulullah said, beautiful points he's explaining to us so that we can attain the success in the hereafter. What beautiful methodology, explanation, subhanAllah. The master of the universe, the chief of the universe, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us that we waste our day and night always gossiping, talking, oh, what's happening, what else? At home, men and women, three or four together, we just look at each other, wasteful discussion, he said this, she said that, this happened, no thawab, no reward, no benefit in the world, nor the hereafter. Okay, fine, have a discussion, you know, if you sit down for a here or there, but ongoing, continuous, wasting time, wasteful discussion, no benefit for the akhirah. No benefit. No benefit for the akhirah, for the hereafter. At least, uh, at least make a schedule that look, that's such a great, great a secret that's been unraveled or explained to us by Rasulullah that you want to be first in this race, the race to the hereafter. That deed you need to adopt to become first. Do that deed that remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, bukratan wa asilam. Remember Allah in the morning, in the evening, do the dhikr of Allah, and your, your burden will lighten, will reduce, the burden will reduce. And this is why Rasulullah has given us this direction for dhikr. So, one of the pious elders, Ramadan, stated that on the day of Qiyamah, when people will be given the thawab for their deeds, when they'll get reward for their amal, obviously the person will get first, they'll get reward. Then many people at that time will be envious looking at him or them. They'll regret and have remorse. Oh no, they'll say. Oh no, he's taken that much reward. And for which reason? For due to dhikr. That these people were regular in dhikr. And they will say, this easy was that deed. That just to sit down, close the eyes and saying, Allah, Allah, and that much reward. They'll look from their eyes and there'll be rewards of highest mountains. And how easy it? You know, effort, no strain, no difficulty. You just have to close your eyes and marakba do Allah, Allah in your heart. And your sleep is being fulfilled. The tiredness is going away. The light of Allah Ta'ala, nur is coming to the heart. Shaitan's running away, alhamdulillah. But we say we don't need to do this. To learn this dhikr, alhamdulillah, even if to go a thousand miles far, even then it's beneficial. This Aj is humble servant, this humble person, that when I used to go to do the ziyara and meet my sheikh, uh, my husband said, not that I'm going to meet my sheikh, no, no, how can I go to meet him? Am I worthy of that? That they were those who had met Allah. So ziyara, to to see his blessed appearance, that when you go to see your sheikh, we're not even capable that just by seeing their blessed face, your iman shoots up, it rockets up. 
Yes? So you don't go to meet them. Oh, let's go and meet him and see him. Let's go and see him, see him. Those people use these words. Let me go and see this person or see them. They don't know that they, they are something else. These beings that, that when you see their blessed face, the wali of Allah, then your iman, it rockets up. It shoots up. If you sit down and just speak about them, alhamdulillah, then you reach to the court of Allah, to the nearness of Allah. That if you just sit and speak about Hazrat Sahib's like this, my Sheikh's like this, he does this, Hazrat Tanvi Sahib, that was his habit. I've read this. Hazrat Tanvi Sahib, the great Mashaikh, great Sheikh, he used to, when he used to get up, leave his home, and he would sit with Hazrat Saharan Puri Sahib, he'd go and sit there, he said, how come you've come? He said, um, that I don't have nothing else at the moment. I thought, let me sit down. You're sitting down. Let's sit down. Let's sit down together and speak about our Shaykh as a Haji Sab. Let's speak about our Shaykh. Subhanallah. He said, You come for this reason? He said, Yes. That's why I've come. Let's sit down and speak about our Shaykh and remember his times and his ziyara we did and what he told us. And for hours we'd sit and speak about him. And when he'd come back, return, then he had to become Tanbi Sab, isn't it? Then look what he became, Alhamdulillah. He's called the Mujaddad, the reviver of Tasawwuf. Because he uh, presented these solutions for us. We just think times for wasting. Everything will just happen ultimately. Oh, just pray. Or they used to pray tahajjud. And that's why they were well our brothers. There are different times for different things. In your heart, develop love. Develop love. Develop uh, humility. Sincerity. Okay, it's fine. That when we see notes and cash, we have so much love, we want to take the hundred pound, hundred note, or this note, fresh note, just come out of the machine. We love it. Currency, money. We look at a car, new car, we kiss the car because we love the car, the vehicle. And when we sat down in our factory, we, we work, we love the workplace, let's stay there on the chair, we love that place, the workplace. Yes, so same way, those people who have love for the hereafter, who want to be first in the race in the hereafter, they have love for the faces of the walis of Allah. Say subhanallah. It's all about love, isn't it? Whatever you fall in love with. So they have enjoyment in that. Why? Because as soon as they see their sheikh, their teacher, they hear his words and his maqam, and his status increases, he feels that inside the student. Automatically he's increasing. He doesn't feel like speaking about anybody else or going anywhere else. So, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Let's just flee unto God. And others will be envious in the hereafter that these people came first. That we thought dhikr was a minor, insignificant. We used to do other big actions and, and, and uh, difficult actions. This mujahida, this hard action, this effort, this deed. But if we had known, this is Allah's will. Allah Ta'ala said, I love my dhikr so much that there's no other action I like more than my dhikr. Allah says, the person who does my dhikr, I love him most. And he, Allah says, I'm very close to him. So Allah Ta'ala hasn't put any restriction or burden or barriers between his love and him. Allah Ta'ala says, Allah says that the more the reward is, the more easy is that method to acquire Allah's love and his closeness and innocence. But shaitan deviated us, tricked us, that he will be ready to do any action. But we know in the morning there's a majlis, we won't get up from our mattresses, from our beds. How long? One day we will regret that day will come. And the grave will come. They will have to come. That's why uh, Azala Malona Sabrahim Tura stated that Amal, when they'll be presented in the rafter, then they will chew their fingers, cut their fingers, and be so envious that, oh, finally, I don't think it is such an easy action, such a great reward these Dakarin are taking. We've missed out. What a big mistake we committed. Big mistake. So, my brothers. May Allah Ta'ala uh, open the eyes of our hearts so we can realize, so we can understand what is better for us, what is not good for us, and what is essential for us. Essential is and what will give us most reward at, of all. Which item, action is most beneficial for me? Just like, which product is beneficial for my shop to hold a stock so I can sell it? Here we go to the warehouse, to the wholesaler. What things selling nowadays? What's in demand? They say these shoes are selling, they're in fashion. Is it? Yeah, you just buy this, put it on the shelf, it will sell. Okay, give me some of this. Give me these products as well. Let me have this as stock so I can sell it as well. The same way, amal, deeds. Yeah, we need to think. A dunya is a warehouse, a wholesaler's outlet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of this world. And we ask Rasulullah you are in charge of this, O Prophet of Allah Sallam, that which product action is the best for the hereafter? Rasulullah said, Dhikrullah. Just like I picked up the shoes from the wholesaler. So Rasulullah said, did you not know about Dhikrullah? Oh, okay, Dhikrullah is a great action product for the akhirah, for the hereafter. Sell it. 
In other words, implement it, practice it. So we ask Allah, we should pray to Allah, supplicate to Allah that uh, with the time we waste in the dunya, we should go to a friend of Allah, love him and, uh, and take hold of his company, spend time with his company, learn dhikr from him and his love should increase in our heart so that we can become first in the hereafter, alhamdulillah, first position. That's how easy it is to do dhikr of Allah. So today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, for example, uh, due to our sins in the dunya, we have a, an issue in the form of adha punishment. Allah Allah Ta'ala make it easy for us. Um, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Everything stopped, ceased. All the, the routes to amal, big, big amal, that we can't go on umrah or hajj. We can't do tawaf. We can't uh, go to the road of Mubarak, the blessed uh, grave of Rasulullah We can't go to Quba. Uh, we can't um, go to Uhud. To Ziyara, we can go to those blessed places, the holy places. Tell me, anywhere we cannot go anywhere. Totally all the routes have been closed. Ramadan is coming, all our mal. We can't pray Taraweeh. We can't go and hear the Quran. We can't see the, the masjid, the house of Allah. Everything's closed. Subhanallah, glory be to Allah Ta'ala, has still kept open his beloved action, Dhikrullah. The great action of Dhikrullah is open. May Allah Ta'ala keep this open. We are sinful, I speak about myself always, I'm afraid. So many sins to my name, full sins, full, uh, fill the space between heaven and earth. May Allah, not due to this, my sins, uh, stop this uh, gathering of Dhikr. That Allah, we are thirsty, we are thirsty, Allah, those who are thirsty, the humble servants, your servants, and due to their love, Allah Ta'ala has also allowed me to say, I'm sinful, you come, you attend, due to your love, Allah Ta'ala has opened this door of dhikr. Even until now, the greatest door of Allah's rahmah, mercy, Allah Ta'ala has not closed that, his dhikr. Allah has closed his door, his houses, his homes, masjids, but Allah Ta'ala has kept the door of his dhikr open until now. But we are so ungrateful. Even then, we don't do the dhikr of Allah. Even then, we don't sit in this majlis. Even then, in the morning, we're lying down on our beds. The women and the men have fear of Allah. When Allah Ta'ala's adhab is around us, the adhab is on our heads. The adhab has entered into this dunya. One is adhab will come, it will come, but it's entered. into the Allah, Allah's adhab has entered into the Where does it end? Allah knows where it will end. Allah knows even now, we are fussy and not taking the assistance of Allah Ta'ala's dhikr. We don't do tawbah of our sins. What a great door of mercy Allah Ta'ala has opened to us. This is not a function, some do that we're sitting in. This is not a do or a function, is it? Yes, some party or some program or some conference that we're sat in. It's not some program. This is adhab that we are in. In the darkness, there's a light Allah Ta'ala has given to us of His dhikr gathering. Allah says, I've provided you a light within the darkness. And we think it's a function, some ritual, some tradition. Oh, we just sat here doing dhikr of Allah, just passing time. Oh, servant of Allah. Today's negligence is here. This is adab wherein if we're lazy. If we're still lazy, may not be. May Allah Ta'ala not allow. May Allah Ta'ala not allow. Allah says, okay, even still he's sleeping on the bed. Yes, and if then it comes to our homes, the adab, then... Then, one child saw a dream, a child, young child. Nowadays, a lot of dreams, alhamdulillah, being witnessed and dreams, also good news. Nowadays, it's adab days and dreams are seen by people. These are hints and directions that do this. The person who wants the, the, the rahmah, mercy of Allah, Allah Ta'ala gives direction. So, a child saw a dream, a great storm that has surrounded the world, big storm. Uh, his words I'm not mentioning. The same way I'll explain to you, just to explain it, tell you the meaning of that. what he said he saw, the child, or the, what the child saw. Because the children's dreams are correct. And the child said that I saw that uh, there was a storm, a storm's coming, a very grey, big storm. And there was a cave, a cave. And he said uh, that I'm sat in the cave, this Ajis, this number seven, and I'm calling, come, come. People are coming, and they're running towards the cave, he said, when we sat there, then Hazrat Sahib is speaking about me, the Hazrat Sahib was hosting dhikr, hasbunallah, wa ni'mal wakeel, dhikr like this, we sat doing dhikr, as soon as we were doing dhikr in that cave, then that storm, it, it increases with speed, it's grabbing everyone in the world, but when it came to the cave, then it retreated, say, subhanallah, 
Dhikrullah. The storm retreated, went back. He said, my eyes open, I'm screaming on the bed. I was crying. His mother father said, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why are you crying? He said, I would go, go, save me, save me. He was in afraid. He said, I was afraid. Allah, forgive me. Allah, forgive me. Adab. Adab. And the fear overwhelmed the child. So we should be ashamed that we have become old men and women all lives long disobeying Allah. Do we feel ashamed? Even now in the morning time when the sun is rising, there's dhikr taking place and we're lying on our beds, mattresses. Oh son, you foolish people, if we're grabbed hold of by Allah, then what will happen to us? What will be our consequences? Such a great protection Allah Ta'ala has given to us is dhikr. And we're not ashamed that we're sleeping in bed. Allah Ta'ala's dhikr is taking place after fajr and you're sleeping in your bed. And the phones are next to your pillows. That, and is that the time for you to be in sleep? You should be waking up the hundred time. That's your time, open up, uh, wake up, do your dhikr and then wait, the dhikr will start, sit in dhikr until sunrise, then pray salatul ishraq and to please Allah and then do dua Allah Ta'ala, turn this other boy from a such great dreams Allah Ta'ala is showing, even then we're not uh, waking up and understanding, even then we sleep on our beds and we're afraid of corona, corona will come, what's corona, it's adab, it will come. Yes, we're looking for injections, vaccines, drugs. The vaccine is the dhikr of Allah. Dhikr of Allah. And Allah has given this vaccine, He's made it alive, go. The surgery is open. The clinic's open. Allah has opened His clinic, the center. The, go there, go to the clinic and uh, take the vaccine, injection. Yes, for the sake of Allah, Allah's rahmah, Allah has not closed His surgery, yet, His clinic yet. The dhikr of Allah. So we think it's a game, sleeping, sleep's not fulfilled. Such a deep adab that it's, it's overwhelmed the dunya. Thousands, tens of thousands of people's lives are uh, passing and we're sleeping. The, the rahmah, the door of Allah's rahmah is there. And due to the dhikr of Allah, Allah wants us to be saved. So if we got a little bit of shame and wisdom, then every man should be awake in the morning for dhikr. Sit there with your children. Yes. Even if he's 10 years, 7 years old, 8 years old, wake him up, sit him down. The children's du'as is a big effect. Allah, his rahmah will awaken. The subhanah, this child sat down and is remembering me in the morning, early morning. Okay, due to this child, let me uh, eliminate this adab. Hasbunallah, don't you know the value? You don't know the value? You don't know the value? You don't know the value? What a great value of these kalimats, these verses. The Rasulullah, some the final prophet. He taught us these kalamats and he is prostrating, reciting these verses in a great expedition. He's asking Allah's help, Allah save us, Allah save us. With the kalamat, reciting this, what a great kalama verse. So how sad, how sad those people even now, they don't take heed. May Allah Ta'ala, uh, let's ask Allah for protection. Yes, everything will end, these dramas and games. No one will be able to say, oh, it'll turn back, turn back. Can anyone guarantee when this will stop? When this will cease and turn around? Can anybody? Don't listen to the words of the world. Please Allah. Please Allah. Will we do it again in the morning? Let me see who understands my words. Which men uh, and everyone leaves their beds or they still want to invite Allah's adab and they pre- uh, prefer to go towards Allah's punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the words He has allowed me to speak, enable me to speak, may Allah give me and you all the tawfiq to implement these. And may Allah Ta'ala give us true khawf and true fear. May Allah Ta'ala save us and give us release from that adab, from that punishment. Uh, uh, may Allah Ta'ala take us out of this difficulty. Yes, no changes come, no beard on the face, no part at home, and music, singing, instruments, everything sim- still there. How un- we, are, we, we have no shame. We have no shame. We are such weird people to the extreme where weird people. No fear, no khawf, nothing. In hospitals, there's no beds. People are being shoved out of the hospitals. No space. Ajeeb, ajeeb conditions. And same old actions, music, singing, sins. And the faces are spoiled. Our bodies, no our appearances, our lifestyles, our children are still the same. And no fear in the heart, nothing the same. We're worse than we were before. So even now, uh, I could read the verse of the Qur'an, I'd explain. Let's look at that verse where Allah Ta'ala and how He has stated, 
in the Qur'an. I feel like even now I open that page up and I recite that verse to you. That how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Qur'an clearly has explained. Clearly Allah has explained. If I wasn't afraid that our dhikr we have to do, I'd open the page now and, and recite that verse. And if you hear that verse, then maybe you'll lose your life. That today Allah is speaking about today, the condition that is around us today, right now. Such a brilliant verse that is. Yes, I was reading that in the Quran today. I saw I was amazed. Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala has given us the message for our situation today. We are in that condition now, that situation now. That scene is unfolding around us now. That verse is there, it's present in the Quran. Allahu Akbar. Tomorrow I'll recite that verse to you, inshallah, if I remember. Okay, let's do the dhikr of Allah now. Recite the root sharif. <laughs>
या अल्लाह मरीजों को शिफा नसीब फरमा या अल्लाह जो नामीद हो चुके हैं अपनी बीमारियों से मेरे मौला अपनी उम्मीद की कदम तमाम तेज रहमत की मेरे मौला या अल्लाह जो दुखी है तो उससे दुआ मांगता है तो उसके दुखान को दूर फरमा देता है जब मरीज तो उससे दुआ मांगता है तो उसके मर्ज को दूर फरमा देता है या अल्लाह तो अपने फजल कम से या अल्लाह तो हमारी दुआओं को कबूल फरमा ले या अल्लाह हमारी हजात को कबूल फरमा दे हमारे बीमारों को शिफा नसीब फरमा दे या अल्लाह हमारे घरों में रौनक वापिस ला या अल्लाह बरकतें वापिस ला रहमतें वापिस ला अपना फजल वापिस ला अपनी नमतें वापिस ला या अल्लाह हमें बेहतरीन रमजान नसीब फरमा दे फिर वही रौनों के नसीब फरमा दे फिर वही उजाले से नसीब फरमा दे या अल्लाह मसाजिद की रौनक की वापिस ले आ मेरे मौला या अल्लाह हमारे गुनहों की वजह से हमें जलील न फरमा हमें रस्वा न फरमा या अल्लाह हमारी पकड़ न फरमा अपनी रहमत के सदके से या अल्लाह अपने हमीब रहमत आलमीन के सदके से या अल्लाह उनके सदके से मेरे मौला तो हमारे गुनाहों को माफ फरमा दे या अल्लाह हमारे गुनाहों को माफ फरमा दे या अल्लाह हमें सच्ची तोबा नसीब फरमा ऐसा डर नसीब फरमा दे जिससे नाफरमानी खत्म हो जाए ऐसा डर नसीब फरमा जिससे कहीं नाफरमानी खत्म हो जाए ऐसी फरमा बरदार नसीब फरमा को मेरे मौला जन्नत के दरवाजे खुल जाए या रहमीन या रहमीन ऐसे अमान नसीब फरमा ये जन्नत करीब हो जाए ऐसे अमान नसीब फरमा के दो जख दूर हो जाए ऐ मेरे मौला अपनी रजा वाले अमान नसीब फरमा दे या अल्लाह अपनी रजा वाले ना रातें नसीब फरमा सजदे नसीब फरमा ऐ मेरे मौला ऐसा जिक्र नसीब फरमा या अल्लाह ऐसा जिक्र नसीब फरमा कि आखिर तुम सबसे अला दर्जा हमें नसीब फरमा आखिर तुम सबसे अला दर्जा हमें नसीब हो जाए मेरे मौला ये अल्लाह तो अपने फजल क्रम से मेरे मौला अपने हबीब के सदके से मेरे मौला हमारी हिंदुओं को कबूल फरमा मेरे मौला या अल्लाह हमारे माँ बाप की बख्शिश फरमा या अल्लाह हमारे माँ बाप की बख्शिश फरमा या अल्लाह जिनकी आज का बर में पहली रात है मेरे मौला इस दुनिया को छोड़कर जो गए होंगे मेरे मौला कितने लोग मर रहे हैं आज के मेरे मौला जिनके कबर में आज पहली रात है मेरे मौला या अल्लाह उनके कबर के सवालों को आसान फरमा देना या अल्लाह उनकी मदद फरमाना या अल्लाह उनके साथ रहमत करा वाला मामला फरमाना बशरत के तकाजे से मेरे मौला जो उनसे गुना हुए उन गुनाहों को माफ फरमा देना उन नेकियों को जल्ला रोशन कर देना जो उन्होंने तेरी रहमत फजत से सरजद हुई मेरे मौला नेकियों को सदके से उनकी मकफत फरमा देना या अल्लाह जी उनके दरबार से थे कबूल और मकबूल नेकियों होने की मेरे मौला या अल्लाह उनकी गलतियों से दरगुजर फरमाना या अल्लाह रात उनके लिए बड़ी सख्त है दुनिया के दौर को छोड़कर वो कबूल में आए हैं मेरे मौला तेरी रहमत में पहुंचे या अल्लाह उनसे अपने मेहमानों वाला सलूक फरमाना या अल्लाह उनसे अपने मेहमानों वाला सलूक फरमाना या अल्लाह खुश खुशबत होंगे वो लोग जो ऐसी औलादों को छोड़ के जा रहे हैं मेरे मौला जो उनके लिए दुआएं करेंगे जो उनके लिए बख्शिश के सम्मान करेंगे जो उनके लिए सदके देंगे जो उनके लिए नेक अमल करेंगे या अल्लाह ऐसी औलादों से बास फरमा कि वो कबरों में हमारे उनके माँ बाप जो हैं और नमाजों को तर्क करें दाढ़ियों को काटें बेबर्दगी करें गाने बजाने सुने या अल्लाह ऐसे औलादों को क्या फायदा जो आखिरत में कामयाब काम ना सके या करें एक और साल नसीब फरमाना या अल्लाह उनके जाने की बरकत से मेरा मौला उसकी औलादों को तब्दील फरमा दे उनके दिलों को तब्दील फरमा दे उनके घरों को तब्दील फरमा दे उनको सच्ची थोड़ा नसीब फरमा दे उनको रोना सिखा दे या अल्लाह दुनिया की मोहब्बत उनके दिल से निकाल दे कोई सच्चा प्यारा आशिक उनका दोस्त बना दे या अल्लाह को सच्चा प्यारा आशिक तेरा उनका दोस्त बना दे ताकि जिंदगी का सफर आसान और सहल हो जाए मेरे मौला या करीम या करीम हमें मांगना में नहीं आता या अल्लाह बगैर मांगे हमें अता फरमा दे या अल्लाह हमारे टूटे फूटे अल्फाज हैं मेरे मौला इन अल्फाजों को हम कैसे पेश दे सामने करें उस तेजी रहमत का सह है इन टूटे फूटे अल्फाजों को चुन ले मेरे मौला और अपने फजल कम से इन टूटे फूटे अल्फाजों को मोती बना दे या अल्लाह मोती बना दे जिनको मेरे मौला थे मोती के सदके से हम सबको बख्शीश फरमा या रहमीन या करीम अपने फजल से फिर हमें जिक्र करने की तोफीक नसीब फरमा सो अल्लाह सैर हो तो तेरे याद हो तेरे नाम के साथ सैर अदा फरमा शाम हो तो तेरे जिक्र के साथ ये दिन है तमाम फरमा या करीम यही तेरी सबसे बड़ी नमत है सबसे बड़ी नमत है सबसे बड़ी नमत है वसल्लाखल के ही नूर हर शही जीनत फुर्श ही बाबा नहीं है स्वामी ये जुआ जी सब जाती अहल बैत ही ये जुआ इन मेरा हमती कही सुबहानी को सलाम सलीम और हम